What's up everybody? Let's take a look at this question today. We have a loop that's heading into a field and we're going to construct a paragraph describing what's happening to the current, the induced current, at time t1, t2, and t3. So let's just look at this. Um, remember the key idea with this is that we want to figure out, well we know that the EMF which is essentially, essentially the voltage, is going to be proportional to the current. And this is based on the change in flux. So we want to look at how is the flux changing as uh, our coil is moving into the loop. Okay, so if you look at time one and time two, you can see that the change in flux is actually the same. So remember, flux is essentially the B field times the area. Or the part that's you know perpendicular to that so you can see that that's clearly staying the same since it's moving at the same velocity the change is the same the flux is changing but the rate at which it's changing is the same in time three though notice that the flux is actually constant so it's once it's fully enclosed the ba is staying the same for during time three actually once you know from this point all the way to when it starts to exit it's actually going to stay constant um, so yeah so we're going to go ahead and uh, write a paragraph about this um, what i would recommend on these is that you look for kind of the major points and kind of outline what you're going to write so for example what we just said let's just look at some of the major points t1 should equal t2 or the the, the current at T1 should be the same at T2, and essentially the reason is because the change in flux is the same. At T3, the current I should be zero. And again, that's because there is no change in flux. The change in flux is equal to zero, or you could say the flux itself is staying constant. So we also wanna find the direction of the current so remember Lenz's law, we'll use that, and Lenz's law essentially says that the direction of the current is going to induce a magnetic field that opposes the change in flux. So for example, as we look at this, let me draw kind of a zoomed in view. So here's our B field here, right? So as we start to enter the field, the flux is increasing, right? So we're uh, more of the area is enclosed, so the flux is increasing. So what we want to do is in create a current that creates its own magnetic field that opposes that change. So in other words, we want this flux to decrease. So to do that, the B field that's induced should be opposite the current B field. Okay, so in other words, since the current B field is going, coming, going in, we want to create a B field coming out. So B field should be out. Okay, so we're going to use our right hand rule to figure that out. So we're going to take our thumb. Remember, our thumb follows the current, the induced current. And then I can't really draw, but you take your fingers, right, and your fingers you want to create the B field based on the curl of your fingers. So go ahead and try this. See if uh, clockwise, uh, sorry, counterclockwise direction, see what happens in clockwise direction. Oops, that's also counterclockwise. Do it for the uh, clockwise direction, see what happens. And when you do it, you should see, so let's say this is your thumb, right? And then when you curl, your fingers are going to curl and they're going to come out here when you curl. So the answer is counterclockwise. Okay, so I kind of explained this with words, uh, sorry, with just, you know, verbally and kind of outlined it. You should kind of try to outline things if you can. On these um, paragraph questions are typically worth five points. 
Okay, that means you want to make sure like as you create an outline that you have four major ideas and then the fifth point is always like a structure. How, you know, does it have a logical coherence to it? So I have one major point here, one major point here. This has a lot of stuff. Probably there'd be two points out of all of that. That's kind of how I would think about it. Don't forget to have your becauses as well. Okay. So here's the paragraph that I wrote. Um, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm sure you can read. So go ahead and pause this and um, read it over. I also want to look at, uh, there's another way you could explain this. Let's take a zoom. Let's look at our wire. Remember our wire has charges in it, right? And remember, we always kind of assume they're positives. We know in real life they're actually negatives, but for simplicity, let's say we're going to just look at positives. So remember, we have our B field. Here's our B field like this. So what you could do is, let's just take a single positive here. And if you just look at a single positive, as that positive's moving into the field, remember there's our other right-hand rule, F equals BBQ. So there's going to be a force acting on that. And if you do your right-hand rule, here's your thumb going this way, uh, your fingers would go into, and that's going to produce, from your palm, that's going to produce a force going up this way. So in other words, on this single positive here, there's going to be an upward force. And actually, all these positives are just going to be an upward force. So if you notice, what's going to happen is these charges are going to start moving up. So all these charges are going to start moving up. And what is current? Well, current is moving charges. So in the wire, there's going to be this kind of net force going up, causing this current. In other words, our current's going to start moving this way. And if we continue it, our current would move that direction. So that would also produce this counterclockwise current. So it's just an alternate way of thinking about the problem, and you could explain um, using essentially the, those concepts as well. So the next part of the question, this is really just a completely new question here. So we're going to remove the coil. We're now going to use a proton. And actually, I just kind of did this problem a little bit. So now we just have a single proton. It's moving in here. And by using our right-hand rule, we would see that there's going to be a force. And we figured out the direction, right? There's going to be a force up this way. OK, so this is going to take kind of this circular path here like this. So question, uh, the first question is asking to find the force. And this is just a simple math question, right? We'll just use F equals BBQ and substitute in the numbers. They do give you the B, they give you the V, and they say it's a single proton. So you know that's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So I'm not going to do the math on this. You guys can all plug this into your calculator. You should get 1.4 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. Okay, next thing is going to sketch a possible path. Actually, I just did that, right? So you use your right-hand rule. You know the force is up. You know that it's always perpendicular, so that's why you create kind of this circular path. So let's go ahead and draw this in for the proton. It's going to go something like that, right? Um, and then the second one is now it's going to enter the field and it's going to be moving faster. Okay, and so we're going to sketch the path. So as I just mentioned, we know the force is going to take, uh, sorry, the path is going to take on like a kind of a circular path. And they don't ask you to derive this, but let's just do it because it's a thing you should know how to do. So our magnetic force should be equal to our centripetal force, right? So in other words, BBQ should equal MV squared over R. Okay, so notice, let's rearrange this a little bit, cancel out one of the Vs, okay, multiply by R. We got BRQ equals MV. The key idea here, though, is V is proportional to R. 
right? So as V increases, our radius is going to also increase. Okay, so when we sketch that, that means this is going to take a path that's going to have a larger radius, oops, something like that. Um, actually, let me, let me draw that again. We'll start at the same location and just kind of have like a larger radius. So that would be number path P2. You should label those. So that's P2 and P1 was right here. All right, next question is, uh, we, wanna, we want the, the charge to just go in a straight line. So we want it to head on through and just move in a straight line. So we're gonna exert an electric field to do that. So we know that the force is going to be up due to the magnetic field. So we wanna make sure that we have a force going down due to the electric field. So the direction should clearly be down, right? Uh, well, the force direction should be down. It is a positive charge, so in that case, the E and the, um, the F should be in the same direction. And then, as you can see from this little mini FBD here, we do want them to be equal. So in other words, FB should equal FE. So we know this is BBQ. We know the, the, the equation for force is E times Q. So in the end, Q's cancel. Essentially, you have E equals BV. OK, you substitute in the, the values, and you should get 9,000 newtons per coulomb. All right, so go ahead and score yourself, and let me know if you have any questions.